Hi all, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you all are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to solve problem of the day on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So today's problem is merge two binary max heap. So we'll be understanding the problem statement first, then the logic part, and then we'll be coding it up, right? But before proceeding further to the video, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed our channel till now, then guys, please make sure to subscribe. It will really motivate me to make more such content for you and definitely the channel will be helpful for you. So do subscribe my channel and make sure to join our Telegram community as well. The link for the Telegram channel is given in the description itself. So let's move to the problem statement now. So the problem says, given two binary max heaps as arrays, merge the given heaps to form a new max heap. Right, so this is what the problem is. Let's say, um, here the n value is 4 and m value is 3. So this, this is one array given to you. And also it, it is what? It is two binary max heap as array is given to us, right? So this is first array, 10, 5, 6, 2, and this is another one, 12, 7, 9. So on merging these two arrays, you have to determine, you have to determine a new max heap, right? So on merging these two, the new max heap that you're going to get is will be consisting of these elements in this order, right? 12, 10, 9, 2, 5, 7, 6. You must be knowing that we can represent max heap using arrays, right? So this is first heap. This is second one. And on merging, that's the heap that we're getting 12, 10, 9, 2, 5, 7, 6. Okay, so whatever task is, we have to complete the function merge heaps, which takes the array A, B, its size N and M as inputs and return the merged max heap. Since there can be multiple solutions, therefore, to check for the correctness of your solution, your answer will be checked by the driver code. So obviously, for this particular problem, it's not like there's only one approach that you can follow. You can follow multiple approaches. The multiple approaches are there for solving this question. So by the driver code and will return 1 if it is correct, else returns 0. Expected time complexity has been mentioned here. Big O of N log N. And expected auxiliary space as well mentioned, that is big O of N plus M. Right? So I hope the problem statement is uh, pretty much clear to you. Well, um, for now, in this particular problem, the approach that I'll be using is that uh, TP5. TP5 algorithm I'm going to use for solving this particular problem. So what... What actually we will be doing is, this is the first array given to us, this is the next array given to us, B, A and B. So we can take another array, um, let's give it any name, let's say we are naming it as merged. So we will be taking uh, another array, uh, which will be formed by merging these two array, that is array A and array B. First we will be inserting the elements of array A and next the elements of array B. And then we can perform heapify operation on it and due to which we'll be able to get the expected answer that is expected from us, right? So this is the sort of uh, quick recap of the approach that I'm going to use for solve, solving this particular problem. So let's move to the approach part now. Let's have a proper understanding regarding the approach that I just discussed. Okay, so before proceeding further, let me give you some sort of idea regarding the heap or like max heap. So you must be knowing in max heap what happened is that root node or the parent should be greater than that of its children. Let's say this is the 23, 12, 11, 9, 8, 7, 6. So this is what max heap and how we can say so because you can see for every parent if you will check. So 23 is greater than that that of its children which is 12, 11 and recursively as well like from uh, like below child if you will check so for that as well. For 12 as well the same property is getting satisfied. For 11 as well same property is getting satisfied. Also this is one thing and another thing is that the given tree should be a complete binary tree. The first thing that I mentioned that should be the first condition, the first criteria that I mentioned that should be satisfied and another one is that it should be a given tree should be a complete binary tree. Right. So that's what the thing is. Also, if, uh, if we have to represent this, this max heap in array format. So how are we going to do so? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's say this is the parent given to us, right? And if I want to know, if I'm interested to know the left and right side of this particular parent or of this particular node. So you can see 12 is the left node and 11 is the right node. So what from here, what we can derive is that the left child will be at position, let's say your parent is at position i. So left child will be at position 2i plus 1 and right child will be at position 2i plus 2. You can check the same from here as well. So here I will use 0. 
so the left child is presented 2 into 0 0 plus 1 that is at the 1th position and right child is present at the 2 into 0 plus 2 that is at the second position so we are going to use these things as well that's why i thought to explain you okay so let's now discuss that how does basically hp file algorithm works right so let's say this is the tree given to us 4 5 9 let's say here we have 3 6 7 okay so this is the tree given to you it's a complete binary tree right so what we have to do is we have to convert this into maxif using the heap file algorithm so first of all the heap file algorithm doesn't take uh, into consideration leaf nodes because leaf nodes are already in, uh, already considered as a max heap they are already satisfying the criteria for the max heap okay so they are not going to be taken into consideration the implementation of the heavy file algorithm will start from the last non-leaf node that we are going to find so in this particular tree if you will check what is the last non-leaf node this nine right now you must be thinking that okay that's fine but how do i get the position of the last non-leaf node so here you can see how many elements do we have in this heap one two three four five six one two three four five six right six divided by two minus 1 so 6 divided by 2 you will be getting what 3 minus 1 that is 2 you know that i have already explained that how the elements are stored in the array format for max heap so 0 1 2 3 4 5 if you are going to store them in array so this is this will be the position for these particular nodes 0 1 2 3 4 5 right so here you can see the last non leaf node is at which position position 2 and that's what we are getting right so when we'll be doing the implementation part we'll be using this particular thing to find out the last non-leaf node that is the number of nodes right and the number of elements that we do have in our array in the given question um after merging basically m plus n after merging so m plus n let's say this is k equal to m plus n so we can take k divided by 2 minus 1 and that is what is going to determine us the last non-leaf node so we'll be starting our implementation from here so what we have to check is that compare the value that is present that is present in the parent to that of this to that of its children right as left as well as right so here you can see we are having left child only and the value is three three is three is what three is smaller than that of nine so nothing change is going to take place for this particular scenario we'll be jumping to this particular node right so what will happen here five we do have right five we do have so the children are 6 and 7. The values for the children are 6 and 7. And you can see they both are greater than that of 5. But we are going to do the swapping with a larger value. So 7 is larger, right? The right child is larger than that of the left one. So we are going to do the swapping. So 7 will come here and 5 will come here, right? So this is what we got after swapping. Now, even after swapping, we will check for the change node as well. So now, the parent will be this particular node and we are going to do the recursive call for the mix um, max cp5 function for this particular node as well to check uh, if we haven't violated any max cp condition so although it's a leaf node so the value will remain as it is now we'll be moving to this particular node or it's zeroth index zeroth position so here you can see the left child is what seven and the right child is what nine which one is greater nine so nine will come here and 4 will come here. Now, the, as if I told, there will be a recursive call after changing the values. So, 4 will be the parent now. And we will be checking the for this particular thing as well, for this particular scenario as well. That if it is uh, if it is uh, having the condition for the max heap or not. So, you can see 4 is obviously greater than that of its child. Child is what? 3. So, yeah, it's, it's satisfying the criteria for max heap. So, on completing the max heap by operation, that's what we are getting 9. 7, 4, 6, 5, 3, right? And that's what? That's our max C. Okay, so you must have understood the approach. You must have understood that how basically EP file got them work. So let's see the implementation of the same now. So here we have taken an array merged, right, of size M plus N. And initially we are putting all the elements of array A to merged array. And later on we are putting all the elements of array B 
too much dairy right so now the overall size of much dairy is going to be what like it, it's obviously m plus n so that's what i'm storing this variable k equal to m plus n now as if i told that the hebefy will hebefy algorithm will start working from the last non leaf node so that's why we are starting our loop from for int i equal to 2 i equal to k divided by 2 minus 1 because that will be the position of our last non leaf node i uh, greater than equal to 0 i minus minus so here we are calling this max hebefy function and at the last we are returning this merged array right so this is our max hebefy function which is taking array the size and the position of the parent as arguments now here we have put this uh, condition as well that if i value has become greater than equal to n n means the size the size of our array that's what we are getting so we have to simply return right so the ith position that we have received that is that will be the position of the parent for left chain we can calculate it as 2i plus 1 as if i already explained and for the right one it will be 2i plus 2 now here we are checking that if l values lesser than that of n the like the the l position that we have got it is it is lesser than that of n also the element at err of l is greater than that of the element that is present of err of parent position if it is so we are going to put that particular position to this variable parent also it's not like you have to check only for left so you cannot put else if you we have to check for both because maybe a case that both left as well as right child is greater and we have to consider that position where the value is larger right so that's what we are checking here as well for the right child part now here we are checking that if parent value is not equal to i it means the position has been changed maybe because of this if or because of this if right so here we are checking that if parent uh, is not equal to i so simply we have to swap the values that is the value the value at the err of i position and at the err of parent position so we are simply doing the swapping and you must be knowing that when i was explaining i explain after swapping also we have to recursively call the max cp5 to make sure that even after swapping we haven't violated the max cp5 property like the max c property so we are doing the recursive call again for the remaining nodes so that's what we are doing right i hope you must have understood the code as well the approach part as well right so in case there is any doubt make sure to put the uh, comment and let me know like how was the explanation you understood everything or not so thank you for watching this video guys keep learning keep coding bye bye